live. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to this episode of Pony Racing. Um, this is the competition where four participants uh, compete against each other to be the first one to solve uh, a ponyable challenge that we give them. And as usual with me today, I have my uh, co-commentator and challenge author, Bob. Hello. And we have our four participants for this episode. Uh, are Xur, hello, Neo, yo, Honolulu, hey, and Nandayo. How's it going? Great. So, um, as all the participants are getting prepared. So this today, uh, we have uh, a bit, a little bit of a special um, challenge in store. So. Usually, we send some kind of download link to uh, a binary uh, that the participants can download, and uh, this time we're not. So, uh, the participants have been given uh, some connection information to uh, their own instance of this, this, the server, but they're not allowed to start just yet. Um, we will separate yourself and put you in a separate channel so that we can talk without uh, spoilers so user was moved out of your channel. channel switched and I should still be able to talk to the participants through this great uh, Bob you have any any comments before we start or should we just kick this off uh, yeah go ahead yeah great so um, well, let's check if everyone's ready. Channel switch. So, uh, is everyone ready to go? Hang on, what's this whisper thing? Yeah, it's basically <laughs> I can talk to you without you, I mean, when I want to. So, like, we are in a separate channel for the commentate, like, when we're doing the commentating. And then if we, if I need to announce something to you, that's, that's when I do that. So, we've already been given everything we need for this, uh, for yes. this, this pwn? Yes. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um... And uh, yeah, is is everyone ready? Honolulu. Yep. Nandayo. Yep. Neo. Yep. Sir. Yes. Great. Then I will do a countdown, and then you can start. Channel switched. Okay, so all the participants are ready. So we are starting in three, two, one, go. Okay, Bob. So a little bit of a special one this time. Um, yeah, that's right. It is a blind challenge this time. A blind exploit challenge. They will not have access to the binary. And they have to figure out what to do. What is the vulnerability? Uh, what does the binary contain? All of that good stuff. Yeah. So this means that the usual thing we do where we kind of like take a little bit of a round trip and, and check what the reverse engineering suite they're using uh, will not really be <laughs> applicable say, since they don't really have anything to reverse engineer at the moment. Um, at the moment, right, exactly. That's the key phrase. Yeah. So we can look at their screens. We see that they are um, connecting to this uh, server, uh, which will display this banner. We can see uh, Honolulu here with uh, a bit of like an... Um, exploit template prepared so always good to come prepared um, with your own tools and stuff definitely and yeah uh, Nandayo is also already going into the scripting part because this challenge I mean there's always going to be a lot of like repetition and try and try an error but uh, even more so this time I think yeah absolutely and the thing is is that they're going to need to do a lot of black box testing and so 
they might need to start from scratch, you know, a couple times, and that's going to be really painful if they're just doing it, you know, with a keyboard. Yeah, definitely. So, basically, the, the I mean the the actual function of the challenge itself is as basically as simple as it gets. So um, we have, well, it prints a nice nice banner, Bob style, uh, which we all thank you love, and it asks <laughs> for it asks for a buffer, and yeah. It doesn't really do anything with it either, right? It just, it just reads a buffer. Yeah, like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Like the so simplest. no leaks, none of that stuff. Yeah. Right. And well, the the trick to this is that um, first of all, it has it does have uh, a stack canary, so you can't just immediately overwrite the return address. But it is a forking server. Ah, so what does that mean? Yeah, so I mean, typically, uh, I mean, the stack, the stack canary will uh, it will be randomized each time you uh, start a process. But when you fork a process, you're just like uh, taking a, a copy of of the memory of the of the running process. So the stack canary will be the same. So that means that each time you fork off a, a child process to handle the um, uh, the connection or the, the stuff, the, the stack canary will be the same, which means that if you just overwrite um, one byte uh, of the stack canary, you can try all the 256 possible values for that byte, and for one of those, the program will not crash, which means that you have found the value of that stack canary, uh, the, the value of that byte in the stack canary, a and then you can just do right. that uh, repeatedly until you have the whole stack canary which takes the problem from instead of being uh, like two to the power of 24 different combinations because one of the bytes will always be uh, null instead you're reducing it to 256 yeah. times three three different attempts that you have to you have to do 256 different ones for one byte and then 256 more and then 256 more in the worst case uh, which is absolutely yep. feasible it is. So it is worth mentioning, obviously, as you might have picked up from those calculations, that it is a 32-bit binary, uh, which also changes some of the exploitation methods later down the line. For example, to control arguments or gadgets, it's going to be slightly different. If you're calling a function, obviously, you can just pass the arguments on the stack, so it's much easier that way. Yep. And there is a message printed at the end, right? So you you see the banner, it takes your buffer, then you get returned back to another function and a, a message is printed. So if there's a crash and it happened between that message being printed and the actual function, which leaves you with a, a sort of canary. I mean, not a canary, an oracle. All connected. See you soon. Disconnected. Connected. Channel switched. Channel switched. Welcome Hello. back. Was that, Hello. Was that the server? Sorry, what? At first, I thought it was my connection because my internet's terrible. No, no, sorry. It's um, yeah. We we will have to. Uh, I'm just doing a few um backup changes here and we will have this up and running in a few moments okay uh so just getting everything up again so yeah
Honolulu and XER joined. Great. User was moved to your User channel. Was Hello, moved everyone. To channel. Hey, Hello. what's going on? Yeah, we um, had I, the uh, the server choked a little bit, but uh, that should be uh, sorted now. Uh, as uh, so, I'm just getting everything back uh, online. So the the challenge server should be um, back up. I seem okay. to be able to talk to it. Sorry, what? I seem to be able to talk to it. Yeah, great. Then uh, it's just getting the stream up, and so yeah. I was afraid that this might happen, but I hoped it wouldn't. <laughs> so let's see if we are. If we get Bob, user was moved to your channel. Hi, Bob. Hey. Hey. So what happened, mate? I think the server was a bit weak, and it was maybe possibly running some other shit in the background. So I just uh, sized it up uh, quite a lot. So yeah, uh, which I should do for every episode, but I hadn't done it in a couple of ones and it had worked fine and yeah. So I just need to get uh, this back and yeah, if you would just um, restart your streams. Um, Mine should be started, right? Yeah, let's see. I think See. It can be a little bit picky sometimes with the like timeouts and stuff. Uh, if there's Yeah, so for everyone watching, sorry, we had some uh, technical issues, but we are getting that sorted uh, now. So <coughs> everything will be back on track any moment. Um. I had some issues with this, with 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 the stuff. Yeah, so uh, we I think the whole server broke down, but I, we did some changes, so now it should be fine. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, it seems to be working now. Yeah, so. could you just stop and start your stream again? So. Oh, yeah, I can do that. And if like Honolulu uh -huh. and Nandayo could try that as well again, just. Uh no, OBS has apparently just gone black screen. What? Yeah, I think I would say just restart it completely. Uh oh no 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 now now I can't get out of OBS anymore. <laughs> OBS is like I... busted. Uh, never seen it this broken. Okay, wait. Hey, Dad, can you check if my stream is up? I restarted like twice. Yeah, I think. I might have to. Let me try oh, it. If o I can OBS see it. is actually completely hung in a way that uh, can't be killed by my by by usual means. That's very interesting. I have um, Honolulu stream now, so um, okay, cool. we have two out of four. Uh, Is mine back up by any chance? Uh, no. Um, did you restart it? Uh, yeah, I'll try again. Now it, now it's, now it's good. It's good. Okay. Uh, mine? okay. Uh, no, not at the moment. No. Nope. But there's a slight delay on these things, so. Yeah, now it's back up. Okay, good. We are back. I'll put everyone in the back uh, correct channel again, and uh, uh, we'll. I'll let you keep uh, hacking.
Channel switched. User was moved to your channel. So, after that uh, bit of uh, detour, mess up, we are back. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but these things happen. Yeah. So, um, what were we talking about, uh, Bob? The uh, Oracle, basically. So, uh, if um, if you get uh, if you get the byte value correct in the canary, uh, the program will not crash, and it will return, and it will call the the write function. So you will get the the message it prints out. Right. Yeah. And and you there's also a tiny little sleep call as well. You know, so you can also use timing, but obviously it's more convenient to use the the write call. Yeah. Just read that data, and, and then you'll know that it, everything was fine. So, have we discussed who is playing in detail? No, we haven't really. Think... Just we just did some some names. So I think, uh, yeah, uh, this is an appropriate time to to consider who are actually playing here today. All right. Well, obviously we've got Xer, who's uh, you know a, a, an interesting guy from the French scene like a really good guy you'll see him you know on the top of lots of pwn war war games and things like that um and recently he's in a new team called the flat network security or society sorry and uh he just told us that they qualified for real world ctf so that's pretty cool um then obviously we have honolulu who's from shellfish so he was just recently at defcon um at the ctf which is interesting because obviously Shellfish is the longest running team, but they sort of are rivals with, you know, um, PPP, which is where Neo comes from, and they obviously won that CTF and got their black badges and set a record. And then finally, we have um, Nandeo, who is a community challenge winner or at least participant uh, who had a really interesting way of solving the last community challenge um, and is currently playing solo for CTF so maybe some team wants to pick him up yeah it's, uh, it's really cool so uh, as uh, as I hope you know that we uh, after each uh, episode uh, more specifically like the day after so that people you know get some time to uh, do something else after after watching this but uh, the day after each episode we release uh, the community challenge which is an, another portable challenge that you can solve uh, on your own and everyone who solves it gets uh, a chance to be invited as a participant to the next episode uh, which is pretty cool i see some interesting stuff uh, here uh, going on on neo screen so there is uh like a lot of stuff being uh printed out here and it looks like some kind of index uh on the left there so it looks like he has started doing the dumping if i'm not mistaken. yep that's exactly what he is doing yep so uh that's that's good because uh that means that he has been able to figure out the uh, cannery by doing this uh, using this oracle to brute force one byte at a time of the uh, cannery to figure it out and that means that you can write past it and overwrite the return address but what do you do then since you don't have the binary um, Bob right well obviously since it's 32 bit and you'll realize it at that point then you know that you can just pass the arguments on the stack. So if you write past that saved return address, um, you can set up the arguments, obviously, straight after. So he's, you know, it's, there was only a few calls that it could be. It was either send or write or something like that. And the, the signatures of those functions are fairly similar. So he probably just tried a few things, picked the first file descriptor that he thought of, which would be number four. Um, and then put a known address, so he probably just tried the base address, you know, for a 32-bit binary, 0804, 8000, and then some amount of size. Once he saw some output there, he knew he hit the jackpot, and now he can control that pointer 
where he put 0804 8000 and he can just dump the binary and once you have the binary obviously you get gadgets and we should mention that there's a lot of gadgets because it is a statically linked binary which yeah. is also why it has no pi yeah yeah so this the whole thing about like overwrite and return address of course uh like relies on the fact that it's not the pi binary uh because there's no uh leak here and uh, yeah right which it's it happens to be conveniently enough so if we look yeah. here at uh sir's screen uh we see that he is also let's see writing some uh it looks like he's setting up some dumping mechanism here as well yeah that's exactly what that is yeah now we switch to his nice windows xp background so something disappeared but that's good so there's some some dumping going on there as well uh if we sw switch over to uh honolulu uh there are a lot of ace being typed yep so yeah so he seems to be using the dynamic approach uh still to figure out how large the buffer is because that's the first problem you got to figure oh, out yeah. like when does it crash when does it not crash so you kind of have to like figure out how big the buffer is i mean you always even if the buffer was like an odd size you know it's going to be rounded out to, to be divisible by four so you don't need to try one by one you can just sort of increment by four yeah uh, that's if he even knows it's a 32-bit binary, or else he would do eight. So I think that's what he's doing. Yeah. So not as far ahead as uh, Neo and uh, possibly Sir. I'm not sure though uh, what the code he was writing exactly was doing. Uh, oh, it's so unfortunate because look at all that beautiful code that Honolulu has. Yeah. For an exploit, like he has this, this perfect template, and we've like just really screwed up his game today yeah that's but uh, that is that's the game right yeah i mean like you should always come prepared but you should always be prepared for your preparation not being like good or appropriate or yeah so uh wait well, i just realized one some thing new code is sir writing his exploit in php did see a var dump. I th I didn't yeah. want to say anything. Yeah, no, he's writing. It is, and then he has I don't, like. I don't even care. I, you know what? You cannot turn me against this guy. This guy is a badass. Like I've seen it up front. Like there's some really good French people, and this guy is definitely one of them. I don't care if he wrote this in Visual Basic. He knows what he's doing. He's done stuff exactly like this before. So. More power to him. Yeah. No. I mean, I I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm more like I'm more, you know. Is unusual. M mesmerized, amazed. But look how much code he's got. I mean, and it is the same sort of thing. He's yeah, it's pretty pretty beautiful and... printouts th there with those like small. Uh, uh, there was some he headline. Yeah, there with like. Uh, no, that was just rerunning. Yeah. So I, I think sometimes we get so used to using the same tools and we like all sort of converge on the same methods and all of that stuff. So I, I like people breathing a little bit of fresh air into it. Yeah. And um and obviously it's all just like you said earlier, it's just input output. So who cares what you use? Exactly. Um it's it, it seems like he's in the process of uh figuring out the stack cookie. That what it what it looks like yeah i think um yeah it's like with the zero at the beginning and all yeah that. yeah and yes i recognize that value from uh when testing the setup so yes he is <laughs> he is dumping the uh the cannery so let's check in with and he's getting lucky with those values oh, as well oh yeah yeah so this is actually like one low. thing where the, where the setup will differ a little bit between the participants so they each have their own instance of this uh service which will have their own unique stack cookie and since they are randomized um, yeah, they might be slightly easier or slightly more difficult to get. Well, not more difficult, but like it will take a little bit more time. Right. But remember, you don't have to do a depth first search. It's not an absolute requirement. Yeah.
Yeah, you can start. I mean, it depends. Like, start from the bottom, start from the top, uh, you know, uh, randomly uh, try. Either way, yeah. it's it's a random value, so on average, it should take about the same time for everyone to, to get it. So it's not it's not a, it's like a big, big deal, basically. Right. So if we're looking with at uh, Nandayo, uh, looks like he is... Yeah, so he has figured out like, kind of like the offset there, I think. The 200, the interesting offset question mark, uh, the 256. And then trying to, yeah, so he is then, the next step for him would be to dump the, dump the canary. Yep. So... That means that we have basically Neo in the lead then. Is that any surprise? This guy won a pony race, then the next day won the community challenge, then went off to DEFCON, won a black badge, then came back and got second, I believe, in Flare On, which finished yesterday, but he finished it in like two days. Yeah. So it's a six week competition. Yeah. Now this is uh... I mean is a is a machine. Yeah. So it looks like he's setting up the you know some uh, tooling and automation here around the on, around the leaks. Um I can't really <clears> see <throat> if he has like a clear goal yet. It looks like he's mostly exploring the the stuff. Yeah, well I mean, let's let's just think about this rationally, right? He, so okay, the the all of this stuff that we've covered here is not novel, right? This is just meat and potatoes nonsense that you might find in a CTF. But what else might you find in a CTF is a flag function, for example. So, it's worth looking for those strings and flag functions, and you know, or, are there any other quick? Um, vulnerabilities that we expect you to use like maybe we put a format string bug in there as well or something like that so it's always worth exploring but you don't want to waste too much time yeah also figuring out that it is in fact uh, a, a non uh, like a statically linked binary because it could be it could have been a non pi dynamically linked uh, binary so right just, yep so just Realizing that, and uh, that would also kind of nudge you towards the direction that there would be a lot of gadgets in memory. Yeah, if you see statically linked, you know you're going to get your syscall gadget or your int80 is definitely going to be in there somewhere, so that should always hint you at that. Um, yeah. yeah. I think um, sometimes people get used to you know, sometimes you have to dump these through like string functions, which they're lucky enough not to have to do that here. And when you dump through string functions, you, it obviously stops on each null. So it takes forever to build the binary. And when you do, sometimes, obviously you don't have the section headers because it came out of memory. And then plus you might have like an offset somewhere that's slightly wrong. So it's kind of interesting, but people just don't load these up in either straight away. Although Ghidra just will open anything. Yeah, I mean, this uh, in this case where you, you you probably just you know you're just searching for a handful of gadgets and just it might not be uh, worth it to try to kind of like dump the whole thing and rebuild something. It's just like get get some stuff out that and then like exactly, so. especially those one you know one byte op codes mm -hmm. you know that you're gonna get yeah. Like a pop uh, EAX or something like that. So if we look into, uh, sir, I think I noticed on his screen just like a moment ago uh, that he is <coughs> dumping some data. Yeah, so you can see here that uh, that part is the, uh, well, no, that could also just be the the message that's sent printed back from the server. So... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he's is. just uh he f he's fixing up his uh, kind of like the oracle here basically. To so he's preparing to uh uh to do the the leak of the canary 
by just checking exactly what is actually sent back by the server uh, if the function returns normally. So that's his brain and you have to respect. There. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to say you have to respect his uh, use of the three equal signs on that, on those statements there. Yeah. It's the... the and that key. does not equal equal. Yeah. PHP, man, gotta love it. It's good language. I mean, I've spent a lot of time in PHP. Yeah, I, I've definitely coded in PHP. I have no problem with it. But it just seems to be the language where you go to like make fun of people for not knowing how to do stuff. And then that kind of makes me want to like that language <laughs> and find the really smart people. I'm just a, you know, contrarian that way. Yeah, yeah. So oh. I think uh, Xer or Xer might uh, definitely help me with my little <laughs> arguments in the future. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I mean, a lot of the issues with PHP has been uh, dealt with, with the, like, PHP 7 and so on. Uh, I think the main issue is still, like, the absolutely inconsistent naming in the st standard library. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the, it's, the, like, all over the place. Yeah. It's, like, ordering of arguments, uh, the, if you see, like, camel case, snake case. Uh, like Yeah, yeah. like... I'm always like uh, for string reverse. Like, is there an underscore between that? Or yeah. no, no, there's not. Like, it just gets annoying. Yeah. The question I have though is, what library is he using? Because I noticed that he had some directory. There was pwn in it, and he had process and socket. Has he written his own PHP pwn tools? Oh, that would be amazing. Good. I think, and he's that kind of guy. That's that's what I'm saying. Like. I think he might have it in his own pwn tools. So I got a question here from Honolulu. Are we allowed to use stuff from previous CTF chels or challenges? Um, oh, interesting. So, um, I mean, y yes. I mean, don't ask me. Yeah, because I would just say like it's. That's the world, you know? You yeah. can use what you use. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I all, I'm a, bit, a little bit afraid to say, to, you know, to answer yes when a, like a hacker says, like, you know, are you allowed to do this? Uh, I mean, regardless, he's behind so far, so. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. You are. The, you know, I, I just think you're the judge, Jerry, and Yeah, no, I think this matters. is... No, I, I, uh, I mean, I think you're free to do that. I mean, we're not running any of the old uh, challenges on the server. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, it was but more more about using tooling. Um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, go ahead. So he thought that he might have something up his uh, toolbox uh, that could be related to this, and yeah, I said that's that's absolutely fine. So. Yeah. There have been attempts to generalize this, and, and obviously the phrase used is BROP, you know, blind return oriented programming. Yeah. Uh, but it's not like, I don't know, I think you can do it by hand with the 32 bit quite easily. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, use what you got to use. Yep. So I want to take like a tour around here and check the status of uh, where they are. So, um, Am I interpreting this correctly that Sir has now managed to dump the cookie and is now looking to dump the... Yeah, it looks like he has some kind of fixed value there. Like the which, which, like four bytes starting with a null byte. So that looks like he has successfully uh, dumped uh, the cookie and is now then looking to be able to dump some data from this and yeah. Neo he has a lot of stuff dumped here so um, I guess trying to you know 
rebuild or find it. Yeah, so here you can see uh, the start of the uh, the elf binary with the magic right. value at the top. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. You just, you know, use page aligned dresses and you're looking for that elf header in a library or in this case, a binary. Yeah. Well, a library is a binary. But, um, yeah, so now he should be able to, I think, loaded in front of him right there is executable memory. So if he finds, you know, just control F, C3, he's going to find returns and you'll be able to find gadgets. Obviously, you can use gadget finding tools to parse that. He might be, it looks like yeah. he's in the P headers, though. He, he, yeah, the elf, no, that was, I was so, I was so confused. Like, why is there a, a reference to LD64, but I realized this is actually two separate. He has two hex editors open, so he's comparing the dump to see like the structure of um, the header and stuff. I think to uh, oh, nice, nice. Maybe he's even trying to uh, oh, what's all this stuff? He's oh yeah, so he he he's looking for a 32-bit uh, binary now to use as a reference. So now he brought yep. this other challenge up. So he he's gonna start comparing these two uh, binaries to see uh, like w what is what and where he is basically. Kind of like get a some orientation, I think. Yep. So that's Sounds always uh, right. always a good trick, like to have if you know if you encounter something that you think is a file, like this this is, this generalizes just not only elf file. Uh, Elf files, but something that's like corrupted or could be part of a file or whatever. It's always good to have these like uh, minimal examples of various file formats that you can kind of use as a reference point. Yeah, absolutely. So checking in with Nandayo, uh, it looks like yeah, he's brute forcing hard. Yeah. Is this on the, the canary. canary, right? Yeah. So just uh, so you have an idea, the, the stack layout is going to be the canary, then the there's alignment of 16 bytes, and in that alignment, there happens to be a value that was used in EBX, which is pointing to some data section because it was used as a, an offset, and then null, and then comes your your base pointer yep. and your return address. So it just gets a little confusing there. Like you're expecting that it would be just the canary and then, you know, the the good stuff. Yeah. So let's see but here. But you can just brute force all the way through all of them. Yeah. But it looks like he, so he's leaking the canary. And uh, that means that that would bring us to a, uh, a position where all of our participants have at least gotten the uh, canary uh, right. Yeah. And then um, they are at various stages uh, after that. So yeah, looks like Honolulu is dumping stuff now as well. Why does he have a bunch of no, I might be mistaken. I might have been, you know, a bit too uh, getting ahead of myself here. He is. is some. Uh, he's a lot of code here that he has brought out. Uh, I'm. I'm not really sure exactly what he's doing. Actually, a little bit confused here. Uh. Okay. That does look like. Wow. It looks like a little framework for prop, basically. Oh. Look, he's got like, it's just all generalized there. Like, it's perfectly generalized for this exact situation. Like, look for this thing. This is your oracle, you know, or winning condition. And like, there he has the winning condition is no crash by default. And he's just sort of filling in the. Oh, oh, the so, he to look so for. he did have a, like, a, an automated thing ready for this. Man, these shellfish guys come prepared. I mean, I mean they I are also, like, shellfish are really into tooling. 
is my yeah absolutely they're the best at it aren't they i mean i think of them as the best at it yeah i mean you're like the biggest anger fan ever no i mean anger is awesome it's uh so yeah. oh look at that we're seeing his war game directories i love this Ooh, opsec yeah. fail right there. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. all the ctfs he played yeah loving it. but this is really cool because as we said honolulu was he was a little bit behind but if this if he gets this thing working here then uh you know he might just you know throw himself right up to the top yep and the thing is, is that what's the difference? I mean, if you gave me a format string challenge, I would just solve it by hand, right? But I understand that there's all these cool tools in Pwn Tools that can yeah. do it, and that a guy like you would use them. So if he's got the tools, use them. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see how this turns out. Uh, also, for everyone uh, watching, like if you have any, uh, you know, questions or anything, just write in the write in the chat, and we will uh, <clears throat> try to answer that or cover the topic or whatnot, basically. Um, with that said, uh, let's go back to Sir, who, um, yeah, he has some notes up in the corner. I really like this. He says the first pointer can canary. Why is the canary always the same? Yeah, that's uh, you know the, uh, the the insight that um, they have received, like the insight they've come to. But uh, the uh, see, you see that that address that he seems to be stuck on is O eight O D B O zero zero. That's just that's the old EBX, and I think mm. that's catching him off guard. That weird alignment thing that I spoke about earlier, he's expecting good stuff to be right after the canary. If oh. he goes a little bit further beyond yeah. that, he, he'll, he'll understand. So it's like he should, he should just blindly brute force like 20 bytes on the stack, <clears throat> and then it'll all make sense to him. Yeah. Now, this is the but thing, he's like... dumping stuff. Yeah, when you're doing these things where you're overflowing stuff and you're trying to figure out like what part of your input ends up where and so on, like I think you should you should not go like too careful when you start out. Like just you know start out by just dumping like a whole lot of stuff uh, into like the input, and then you know yeah. gradually kind of like shave things off to get to you know the minimal thing that you need. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Like, just cast the net really wide and then narrow. You know, don't start with some narrow assumption and then go down the wrong path. No. But then I think when you, when you know, when you ca have cast your, your wide net and you, you know, you caught something, I think it's then it is important to kind of like um, stop and clean up the stuff and kind of uh, really figure out what did I actually find? Because then you have a solid right. foundation from which you can take the next step uh, of your exploit. I think the tricky thing, though, with these sorts of challenges, with the blind challenge, is that you're really you're going on a little bit of instinct and intuition, and then obviously leaning on what you already know about whatever format it is. You know, the protocol format, or in this instance, the the format of the the binary and so i just think it, it depends on how familiar you are with the properties of that exact thing so for example that's why neo just like blasted straight through it he like got the idea and he was already on his way to dumping it didn't matter that alignment stuff didn't really slow him down yeah whereas it looks like zur is getting caught up on those slight details but I know that I say this a lot, but in this case, it's definitely true. This guy smashes some of the the big stuff that I've I've seen, so I'm pretty sure he could do it. Yeah, let's check in with uh, Nandayo if he's managed to. Yeah, that looks like if you look at the bottom there of uh, uh, of his script, that could. Be the 
canary, right? Yeah. And some other... and some extra thing. Yeah. So he he he's confused. Why why is there seven bytes maybe or something? It's uh, uh, well, it just happens to be something else on the. It's actually a great time to talk about something that is that you should generalize. You see people trying to generalize these sorts of attacks and challenges. Something that you should generalize with these things is have some mechanism to cache the values that you're, you're grabbing. You're going to be starting it so many times when you get caught with these weird things and like, what does this mean? This doesn't make sense to me. I thought it was going to be like this. And so you start it over again. You want to make sure that you're not brute forcing that canary again. It's just going to eat up so much valuable time. Yeah. It's just not worth it. Yeah. And I mean, whether you do that by having some, some nice like cache mechanism or just like manually, you know, rep commenting out some part and hard coding in a value, uh, you know, whichever way, but just, you know, do something so that any, any kind of brute forcing you do, um, you, uh, you do it once and then never again. That's it. Yeah. So, so that's something to live by right there. Yeah. So the question was, how, how can you dump out the binary after you brute force the canary? Yeah, so the idea is that by doing uh, a partial overwrite of the return address, you can, you know, find, or like, yeah, basically you, you can find uh, some location where it will spit out something uh so you know that you hit some function that writes stuff and then you can add and in this case there's one right before and one right after so it's in the vicinity you have that function carry on sorry yeah so exactly so you can find a a, a call to a write uh, function and then you can then you kind of see that you will get something printed out back that shouldn't be there uh, during normal operations, which means that you have managed to like blindly hit one of these addresses where you have a write. And then you can um, use that and control the arguments to that by doing a full uh, overwrite and then controlling the arguments and start dumping out memory. And then you can start at the base address and then you can, you know, dump page by page or whatever, ho however way you want to do it, basically. Yeah, absolutely. And I just think um, it's interesting to think about the 64-bit case of this exact problem. Because there, you're not going to be able to control those arguments directly on the stack. You have to be able to find gadgets. So you're going to do that partial overwrite, look for the gadget, a pop RDI you're looking for, a pop R RSI, um, and then you need to call the, the other function. But it's still possible. It just takes a couple more steps, and obviously you need to write no bytes. Yeah. So we look at Sir here. He's now writing a small C program to just dump that out, I guess. Uh, so again, like producing some kind of like reference file to compare what he sees against. Uh, yeah. Bob, Solid. you have some, some, a little bit of a s static in the background. Was some... Yeah, it's fine. Um, Is it good now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just uh, uh, some noise previously. Anyway, um, yeah, so he's looking a little bit of what strings he's finding. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, I will. Let's jump over to Neo. I see him opening up uh, Ghidra. So, does this mean that he has Lovely. managed to reconstruct a big enough portion of the, of the binary? Did he? Oh, has he kind of like dumped out the whole thing and just reconstructed uh, the binary? Is yeah. That what we're yeah, looking at? I think it's exactly what he did. Yeah. Yeah, he just dumped out everything. And then, honestly, as long as the P header is there, Ghidra will just slice that thing up. Yeah, so, yeah, we can look at the decompilation there. There's a question for you. Yeah, 
for those who just joined, can we get a quick recap? Absolutely. Uh, so, <coughs> the setup, we have our four participants, each have their uh, pawnable that they're trying to be the first one to solve. This time, they are not given a binary. They're just given uh, an IP address and a port to a binary that just takes uh, a buffer, swallows it, and does nothing. Uh, except it prints out... Um, it prints out uh, a message um, and uh, sorry one moment yeah so it's a buffer overflow um, it's a blind exploitation challenge and their job is to figure out how to dump the binary in order to get enough gadgets to make that overflow useful. And there's a canary in the way, and the binary is 32-bit statically compiled. So a lot of gadgets. Yeah, so Honolulu was just... Uh, sorry I, why I was a bit uh, interrupted. I was uh, asked... Uh, how many concurrent connections uh, he was allowed to use uh, to the server. Uh. Okay, but you know what? That's an interesting thing because if he uses concurrent connections, there's a slight chance of race condition, which we know about, but then there's also the problem with predictable file descriptors. You want predictable file descriptors in, in a challenge like this. That's how Neo was able to quickly dump everything. Once you start having to guess which your file descriptor is and which one's closed and where the gaps are, it just becomes a real pain in the ass. Yeah. And the thing is, is because if you get a send call or write call or something like that, where, especially on 32-bit, where you can easily control the length that he can send, it's just not you like there's no point in doing it it's not like he's dumping it string by string he can just dump a full page if he wants he can dump 10 pages if he wants in one go so yep we can see here from his it's notes, not required but i mean we can see here from his notes that it's he 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 realizes that it's uh brop or blind drop uh and he's asking where the flag is yep. in memory uh it is not in memory you need to get uh code execution to solve the challenge because uh the way to solve it is that you execute uh, a small binary and give it your username uh, or like yeah your name as an argument and that will trigger the victory condition so uh, yeah all challenges on pony racing require actual shells yeah we're not half-assing it here that'd be a bit lame yeah, like stick a flag in memory come on like because then what you could do is he could just overwrite the canary with anything, keep overwriting all the way down to argv on the stack, and then just start pointing that at different places in memory. Like yeah. you don't need to do the prop thing. Yeah. So. Ooh. Okay, I just saw something I shouldn't have seen. He's using a template from an old exploit on another war game, which is quite interesting. Oh, so there is there is uh, there is something out there which uses Brawl. Yeah, and I've played that exact war game. Don't get me wrong, I play all the all the pwn war games, so I know exactly what he's thinking. Slightly different though, but okay. So now we know why he has this tooling. I see. Well, let's interesting. switch back to. Nandayo, um, who seems to have scrapped those bytes he leaked, and he has instead written, let's go again. So maybe not confident uh, that what he did was correct. Now so there's a lot of undoing here. So some, some doubt going on. Um, yeah, yeah wonder I, that will I take wonder him. if... See, he has a bug though, because he says while X is not 255, so he's really just, for no reason, taking out FF 
from the equation. Yep. And there may be an FF in the base pointer. So what he probably wants to do is while X is smaller than 256 p potentially or something like that. But he might get lucky. You never know. Hmm. Yeah. But he gets the idea. Yeah, checking in with uh, Sir again. Um, he's yeah, he's got the... He's looking at strings. Yep. And then there you have the message. That's always yep. the darkest before the dawn. And this is from his dump, if I read his file names correctly there. Yep. Why is that string in so many places in memory, though? That feels... Yeah, I think he must have... Oh, he didn't trim... So when he got a successful dump... He might have still had these normal strings in there. Yeah. Oh, there he found a... <laughs> Bin SH. Yeah, that's use useful. That is useful. Hmm. Yeah, so I think some of these guys, what they're doing is they're just controlling the pointer and not the length argument, which send would take or write would take. Oh, yeah. And so they're not dumping it all at one go, so they're getting a bunch of these like other strings sort of in there, So that, which kind of makes it a little bit shitty, to be honest, to, to be able to just load up in Keysra or something like that. Yeah. But it's still enough. Everything here, as long as he knows where the offset is, he'll be able to get some gadgets. And that's what he wants to do now. So and that's why he's getting that bin edge. Yeah, it looks like Neo stopped streaming. Maybe he has some had some issues, but uh well, let's hope. So Xer is saying that the code has a bug when there's a new line the dump is wrong. I think, yeah, if you have a new line in the address that you're trying to dump, like you dump it from that address, oh. then yeah, it's going to terminate. Yeah, so he realized that, I mean, well, he maybe hasn't re fully realized it, but what he has discovered is the, the, the fact that the binary will just read input until it gets a new line. So, yeah. yeah. So you don't want to have that in your op chain. You don't want to have that anywhere. But again, you can dump the whole thing in one go if you want. All right, so now he's he's dumped the data section as well, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so I just got to speak from experience because I've done a lot of these sorts of challenges and I've done that exact thing where I take like each section and I've like got a bunch of different files everywhere it just becomes such a nightmare to handle and to pass through that you always want to try keep it like in one segment if you can because there are tools or you can do this by hand where you can rebuild the section headers and then you have a perfectly working binary that you can just drop into any of the the normal tools like even things that break easily like ob jump ob dump and things like that yeah so if we again look at neo he is no longer in Ghidra. So, did he manage to find? Oh, so now you look, look. He's searching for, uh, looking. He's searching for gadgets now. You can see that he's using Ropper to uh, to find gadgets. And he is not quite finding what he needs, right? So. 
Yeah, we've seen this in the past, though, haven't we? <laughs> that different tools that have different efficacy when it comes to these little hunts. Yeah, yeah, totally. So... It's, it's like doing it again now, and... Yeah, now things are starting to appear. So, oh, he used the automated uh, ROP chain generator. So, I've pretty much never really gotten that to work, but uh, we'll see. Can this, can this work? Now there was some noise in the background, Bob. It, I don't know if that gives you some kind of reference. <coughs> yeah, so Neo setting up his his uh, ROP chain here. Uh, those addresses doesn't. Oh yeah, it's the rebase function. Yeah, okay, cool. And now he's in Ida. That looked like a pretty good decompilation of the of the program so yeah he's, he's you know really getting really close I think and Honolulu screens is kind of interesting as well yeah well because that's that's what real hacking looks like yeah so Honolulu has brought up some slides about the prop I, I think I saw previously as well that N uh, uh, Nandayo was using reading some PDF as well. And this is what happens when you're doing these things. Like, it's a lot of Googling, a lot of reading, a lot of trying, uh, because you will never have, you know, all the stuff you need, fr like, fresh in memory. So... Right, sometimes you need a little refresher or a little a new angle. Or even just copy and paste a little little code. Yeah. So for fast readers, we now have a very quick um, run through of what Brop is. <laughs> yeah. I'm really, you know, interested in seeing. So it, it looked like if we go back to Neo, it looked like he was running the like attempting the exploit against the server but it didn't quite work so yeah it feels like he's really getting there we check back with Nandayo uh, you can see that he's dumping the canary again and you see he's getting the same values the the one C there there's the the null byte and then the the one C so yeah, I think he was just doubting himself a little bit. Like, didn't really feel that stuff was working out. Maybe he thinks it's 64 bit and he was expecting uh, 8 bytes. Ah, good point. And yeah. then he only got could 7 be. and then he got confused. Um, so that, that could be w one reason. Um, hard to say. And. Yeah, but checking in with Sir and he has some notes up there in the corner. So he has this address for the bin SH or at least the offset. And yeah, it's So now he's dumping some stuff, or what's this thing running in the in the corner? He's dumping some more data, right? Well, yeah, it does look like it. Yeah, a bit a bit difficult to follow. For some reason, he's dumping um like twenty one bytes. No, sorry, that's thirty two plus like thirty five bytes of data. Or something. 
no, that yeah, was... and always page lined. So maybe he's looking for elf headers. Yeah. Oh, so he doesn't realize that it's statically linked. He's looking for ellipsy or something, maybe. Oh. Or gods, or you know, global offset table. But he or has a, he has with... a start address there. Uh, eighty seventy six. Wait, what's how's that compared? The the base address is uh, eight zero. Oh eight oh four eight thousand. Yeah, so that's address. That address is too high to find the uh, uh, the base, like the elf header of the of the current executable. So yeah, why is he looking no? But the, it, if because I think well, he might be egg hunting, looking for addresses that look like libraries. Oh yeah. Or, or sometimes when you get the you know what I mean the the another section that has it like still looks like the local section so o eight whatever, mm -hmm. but has the elf header in it. Yeah. But I don't know why. I don't know exactly what he's trying to achieve with that. No. If he does, if you just dump the, you know, like the program headers and the build ID and all of that stuff, you you can see that it's statically linked. Yeah. And basically. Yeah. So yeah, that was that would be definitely something to. To try and just to see that. Yeah, sometimes it's just useful, mm. at least to know where the entry point is, or you know, start dumping out some sections. Because sometimes you'll you'll need to find a specific thing, and so you'll just dump like the strings, and you'll dump you know, uh, the actual symbols as well. And then you'll be able to map them together to be able to know where things are in the file without having to parse the whole thing. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing exactly, yeah. but I know he knows what he's doing. We can go back to Neo, who I saw using uh, <laughs> a bunch of different uh, gadget finders, and he's making some adjustments to his uh, uh, rock chain now. Um. So. All right, that's interesting. So I only saw one int80 gadget in that rub chain. Yeah, but you can see there, he has one at the at the bottom there, uh, the int80 ret. Yeah, So. right, but shouldn't he... You would think that he would be doing multiple syscalls, right? If he wants to uh, do... Yeah. Wait, let's see what he's doing. Maybe... Mm. Do you think that he maybe just built a regular, like, exec bin sh rob chain here, without considering the fact that this is a? No, I wouldn't. No, no, no. He's too good for. He's like, no, no, no. I can't. <laughs> it's possible, but I just. I have so much faith in him. Maybe. Yeah. It did. It did look quite long though, didn't it? Because you should only need to pop four registers for uh, yeah for a normal. No, you see the, the comments the, there. There was like slash bin slash sh. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. But she didn't. Uh, wait. Oh, he's pushing his own bin sh string. Right, that's why it's so long. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, I see. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he didn't look that there's one in the file. Mm, oh, no, but that's, this is one. this. I guess this is an output then from this. I mean, the Rob Chain generator will do this for you. I will just add right. it. Right. Yeah. A little inefficient. But I think I did see him looking at that string in Ida as well. So mm, that's, who knows? That's odd. By the way, is there, is, there a, is there a limit to the input? Like the length of the payload? Yeah, it's four times the size of the original buffer, and the original buffer, I believe, was 256. Yeah, so 1k input. Yeah. Which is, yeah, well, it's 256 entries, in like links in your ROP chain. So, yeah, that's that shouldn't be any problem for anyone. Right, it's pretty big. Yeah. 
So now it's looking like he's he's kind of like doing it a little bit more manually. So you see he's uh, writing the addresses there for the various gadgets. So he's gonna make some some adjustments here to his to his chain. Interesting. Yep. Well, we'll leave him at that for a while. Check in with uh, Honolulu, who is. I guess still dumping a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and then he has a comment here, stupid parallelism, whatever, stupid word, something. Okay. I wonder if that's related to the... Uh, I wonder if, is that like his setup with Python or is that he's talking about the file descriptors? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. What would you do in this instance, though? How would you go about it? Like, who's closer to your method? I think... I mean, first of all, as you said, I don't think I would... Well, th this, 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 there's this problem, right, with the, with the right thing when you're dumping the, the data that... If you don't realize that you can um, control the length, then yeah, it can be. I would probably actually just use the what is it called, the Dune Elf uh, module in Pwn Tools. Oh, uh, like where you just load bytes and then it turns it into a full elf for you. Well, yeah, it, it kind of like it, it's an, uh, this whole abstraction layer on top of it for you. Basically, you give it a you give it a leak function, and then you can do all sorts of queries. Like uh, okay, yeah, and uh, it will e it will cache uh, stuff. It has a cache thing for you, not uh, not like a to file cache, but like a, an in memory cache. So if you you know, request stuff from one address and it has already read stuff, it will not make another read. It already has that cached in memory and stuff. And you can query, like, we'll look up the addresses of stuff. Uh, I think I would try that. And uh, I would probably just build the ROP chain by hand from the start. Because, yeah, I've never had any good experience with these uh, automated uh, ROP chain builders. I don't know if I'm using them wrong or, you know, in the wrong situation or whatever, but I don't think I've ever been successful with them. I mean, the ROP gadget one used to work, but only really on Ellipse C, but then it just stopped for some reason, so I think it's just because of how libc's became compiled like the de facto ones that come with distributions i'm not really sure i haven't really looked too deep into it but yeah it is i mean it's a useful sounding tool to just automatically chain but it just makes too many assumptions like you saw it was already pushing bin sh for him when he had one in the binary uh so there's a lot of times where that's not convenient yeah we maybe if they, they were more limited in space if you go back here to uh, Neo, you can see that he is running his exploit and like typing ls as if he's expecting it to work. So, I mean, he 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 thinks that he is is really close, but uh, I mean, obviously the the server is not really agreeing with him, but. Oh yeah, so he has a. This is an interesting thing. Um, he has this gadget which says in floop. So he's kind of using this as a kind of like a, like a canary for his rob chain. And you you could see that he was moving this gadget down his chain to kind of like test bit by bit because if something crashes, then the connection will close immediately but if it reaches the inf loop gadget it will instead hang so there you can you can have it you can kind of uh, deduce how much of your rob chain 
well is at least executed which is a good good technique yeah so we can see here uh, Nandayo also looking at some documentation you can see him leaking his canary now I think he has some kind of mistake in his code because now it looks like there is an FF in his leak and uh, I oh well yes we we restarted the server right so yeah the the canaries are not what they were when we tested this before so I actually have no idea. He could actually have an FF in his canary. That would be interesting. Because then it might have been the case that he missed it before. I don't know. <coughs> so um, we can check in with Sir, who is also now using Ghidra to uh, analyze the dump. So he, <coughs> yeah, it looks like he has kind of reconstructed the binary as well. And uh, that means, but he, he is also basically at the position where he only has to construct uh, the ROP chain uh, to be done. So we kind of have it kind of like a tight race here, I think. Yeah, it looks like you. So, um, give me one moment. Yes. So, um, I'm wondering what he's doing at the moment, though, because he seems to be still dumping out a lot of stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, so now he's looking for some gadgets. So here you can see he's finding the int data gadget, for example. And... Uh, yeah, so starting to to like find the things he need to construct his his rock chain, and we can check in with Honolulu, who, to be honest, I don't really understand what he's doing. I think, uh, I mean, I think it it is obviously trying to dump the thing but he's looking for a more efficient way to dump it and he's having problems implementing a parallel method yeah that's uh... and that's probably why he has debugging turned on with point tools oh look uh, let's switch back to Neo here you can see that he is doing a, a slightly different thing uh, so as we <laughs> as we mentioned uh, since this is like a, a, a networked, uh, the, the standard in and out is not connected to the socket. In, you have a proper socket from the server, which means that just launching a shell is not enough. You have need to be able to interact with it. So the, the, the way we talked about it before uh, when we were preparing was that you would um, connect the file descriptors, like do, do a dupe or the file descriptors but you can see here that it, will lo it looks like Neo is actually uh, adding arguments to uh, the process he's launching instead to run some code like to run a shell script in the bash process he starts um, so instead of doing this kind of like connecting the 
the shell to the socket on the kind of like binary level he's doing it on the in inside the shell process that he's launching which is a valid and but different way of of solving the problem so we'll see how that works out and he has these small little like helper functions like store string store for and uh, yeah so now he's even like building a small little uh, shell script thing here um, just looping and it's not quite working out yet so it's gonna be interesting to see when when that starts working because it feels like he's you know just you know around the corner from from that uh, to getting that to work um, so yeah if we look over at Nandayo he still dumping out the cookie maybe Yeah, I'm still not really sure what's going on there, actually. Um. So, um, yeah, it's really between these i i mean right at the moment it feels like sir and and neo uh, are the closest to to solving this with neo possibly being you know very close to solving it and um, so we'll see if he managed to do that but sir still has kind of like dumped the binary and looking for gadgets trying to gather everything he needs to to build this rock chain, basically. And yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. Yeah, as, as I said, it's still not really sure what yeah, so here we have some notes from Honolulu trying to think oh now he's okay so he really has, I realized that it was 32 bit and he's still trying to figure out where the flag is but he uh, hinted there towards that he still thinks that it's the submitter thing yes we're still running the flag submitter things which means that yes you need code execution to uh, solve the challenge properly um, Yeah, Bob. It's kind of weird though because if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> the uh, the code that he was repurposing was designed for code execution. So yeah. I'm not, I just think he's having a couple teething issues in his code. That's all. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully, if he could get it underway, and this whole framework that he has gets him to the the sort of at least dumping the thing, I think he could catch up. I mean, Neo has like a really reliable Rob chain, but it it's definitely larger and more complex. So any of these guys could just sort of swoop in there and get it with three syscalls. It's yeah. possible. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, so still really interesting and to see here what's going on with neo but oh you see he he managed to uh he managed to get code execution so let's see if this here we go 
Yeah. I let's So he might have code execution and uh let's... Yep, fireworks. There we go. We have them? So he just uh Oh, then just it, I just Wait, do we have the Did he trigger the fireworks? He didn't trigger no. the fireworks, but he did get the you win. Oh yeah, thing. there you have it. Sorry, I I was I'm a bit I have a delay. Yes, so let's bring him in. User was moved to your channel. Hey Neo. Hello. Congratulations. Well done. Oh. Man, my heart rate's spiking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, that's the idea, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's sad that I couldn't run this thing locally. I think my binary is hopelessly corrupted. But, uh, yeah, that's, man, having to fix someone else's ROP chain is no fun. Oh, yeah, yeah I saw it because you used the, the ROP chain generator thing from... I used Ropper, and, of course, Ropper, of course, generates things with new lines in them and a bunch of other shit. And I'm like, okay, well, I could either try to make this work or write my own, and I was sort of waffling between those two options. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, and I guess I kind of fixed up their their, their thing. I, I swapped ECX and EDX. That's why I couldn't get a, a get an exploit working right away because I had um, I I forgot that. It... Oh. Uh, yeah, but fixing up someone else's ROP chain is no fun. Like I said, probably it'd be <laughs> easier to just write. I was about to actually do. I was about to do uh, uh, write the whole binary to the to the to the FD so that I could get a running version and then debug it and then I was like wait a minute maybe I got the order of arguments wrong and oh. then so yeah then I didn't have to do that so yeah <laughs> now, I saw you struggling with the rock chain and then I as I was commenting commenting on that I have never successfully used like Ropper or one of those like automatic <laughs> rock chain generators so <laughs> It, you know what, in a recent CTF, uh, uh, for the very first time, somebody said, just use Ropper. And we had only like 15, we had only 10 minutes left to go before the end of the contest. So uh, I was just like, okay, screw it. You know, I can't write a ROP, a ROP by hand in 10 minutes. So we just use Ropper and like magically that actually worked. So then I was like, okay, maybe Ropper is actually kind of reasonable sometimes. But Ropper broke down because there were no section headers in the file and Ropper apparently expects section headers. So uh, you saw what I, I actually faked the section headers using a script I'd written a long time ago. Um, oh. So I could reconstruct the, the section headers for various tools, including Robert. Nice. Is there no raw mode? Uh, probably, but I'm not going to. I, 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 knew how, I knew I could reconstruct a section table, and I didn't know how to use Robert, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You know, I have a script that does this for me, and I, I, you know, I wrote this like, a decade ago at this point, but basically, and I, I, I never looked at it since, but it works. Instruct section reconstructor work, and I have a, you know. Like, that's, that's cool. So how do you feel about the challenge? What's your... That was neat. That was definitely neat. It's kind of cool going from like, huh, this binary just kind of outputs a constant string and nothing else to, oh, hey, look, I can like leak the binary to, uh, I, I found, you know, found the sort of, well, not really bug. I kind of knew there was a bug already. Um, I guess my unexpected thing was that I didn't realize I was overwriting EBX. Um, I, I, and so like the leak didn't really make sense as to why it was working or why the offsets were what they were or anything like that. I was just like, okay, well, I'm just overwriting something that you know looks like a pointer. It wasn't until I actually got into the binary that I was like, oh, EBX, of course, right? Because EBX is the, uh, the base pointer from which it does uh, essentially self-relocation. Um, so that's how it finds uh, the strings and stuff uh, relative to the current address. And so of course, that was the, the way to do it. I actually think that that, that that particular problem, you could have done ASLR, and it wouldn't have made the problem much harder, for example, because the fact that it was a forking server and not a, and not a uh, yeah. I figured out... Um, I figured out it must be the canary. There must be a canary on it very, very, very early because uh, when I was leaking it the first time, I leaked out um, a, a byte from the canary before every, everything went down. And when I when it rebooted the second time, the canary was different. But then I realized the canary was always the same. So I realized you must be using this in a forking mode. Like it had to be a random canary thing, but it had to probably be in forking mode. 
um, which meant that, yeah, anything I was going to leak was going to be, uh, any, it, like a canary was going to be constant. And then I was clearly leaking into the stack. So a lot of things made sense pretty quickly um, about what the binary was doing. And then the rest of it was just, okay, let's just write some scripts to leak this thing. And uh, of course it was like a 600 KB binary. So that wasn't super easy because I was <laughs> leaking it 45 bytes at a time. But I actually, I mean, I got, I got the vast majority of that binary. Um, with uh, with just a, a, a tiny like a little tiny bit of uh, of missing uh, data because of the new line thing, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I got most of the binary, so it was pretty easy to reverse. Um, a little bit frustrated that Ghidra decided it was going to crap out and uh, and not reverse the um, the the uh, x eighty six correctly. I'm not sure why it didn't work because normally it understands stack manipulations, but this time it crapped out, so I just went to Ida. Yeah. Interesting. Well, great. Let's um, let's bring in the other uh, participants as well. So, user was moved to user your was moved to your user channel. was moved to your channel. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Hi. We have a, a a winner. Neil managed to solve the challenge. So. Hey, congratulations. Good job. Thanks. Um, but I saw there was some some good progress on uh, all of you uh, to you know different stages. Um, how <laughs> how did it how did it feel, like, sir? Um, at some point, I felt a little bit stuck because uh, I was trying to find the elf magic uh, number, but I couldn't find it through the the leak mechanism. So yeah. I felt a little bit stuck on that. Yeah, it, it turns out that 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 uh, you are smashing EBX, which means that it's not aligned to anything. Um, that that actually really really was confusing. Like the magic number I had to use to leak the elf header was like seven yeah, eight zero or something like that. It was a pretty random number, or seven five seven like D eight. So nice. it was like a super oh, random that value. Makes sense. Well, because yeah, because like basically um, the problem was like I realized it was probably misaligned pretty quickly, but uh, I didn't know why. I thought I was just smashing some random weird pointer and they were doing something really contrived, but it's actually just EBX when I got it when, when you dump the whole binary. It's just EBX. That's great. Uh, Honolulu, you were using some um, some previous tools you had, uh, but it looks like you were having some issues with that. You here? Oh, hi. Here. Um, hey, so I, I had solved the challenge before on uh, blind dropping. And so that's, um, so I had a bunch of scripts to do that. Oh, yeah. And so I copied and pasted a bunch of stuff in there. I realize now that I miss in the progress of that. I miss that it actually leaks out some stuff if you set the thing correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I completely missed missed the leaks. Yeah, I see. So, uh, Nandayo, it seems like you had leaked your mm -hmm. the stack canary, and then you kind of like second guessed yourself or something and started over. Oh, okay, or? yeah. Um, I I've didn't even know blind ropping was even a thing like um, oh <laughs> so this is new to me i've been reading up on the white paper like <laughs> trying to catch up but yeah yeah no but i mean like you you were because you were like totally on the right track in the beginning and okay. basically at the same pace as the others and then uh yeah it looked like you you know you didn't believe in what you were doing basically and no not really <laughs> Oh well, uh, it was a good, uh, good thing. Um, I'm definitely going to be reading up on this after the stream. Oh, yes, it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, it's uh, there's been some some stuff uh, written on this, and there are a few few examples of it, and so on. I don't know, Bob. Do you have any questions or comments to participants? Uh, the famous question is, what would you rate the challenge? Uh, I think we should start with Neo. Uh, on the normal scale, 100s, 500 CTF sort of thing. That was harder. That was definitely harder um, because uh, until you gain some sort of foothold, uh, it's really, really, really hard to know what to do uh, or like, because it, it is kind of a very blind challenge at the beginning. 
Um, the the post exploit, there's a post sort of leak dump everything was fairly straightforward because the I mean it's a very shallow binary. Uh, it's just a, a simple ROP chain at that point. So I think I think I would probably put it at about a 200 again, probably something like that. Yeah, like uh, because it's yeah it's it's kind of an interesting. Uh, um, a leak primitive, um, but then the exploitation part is uh, itself is pretty straightforward. Yeah, that sounds standard. But I was actually quite amazed how quickly you got that leak. Because uh, I, uh, I, I knew you didn't control the size of the leak, but it was just, it was almost insane how quickly you did that. It was Jinmo style. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> Thanks for that. that. That's 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 uh, that's uh, that's a huge compliment. Thanks for the. the I, I don't think I actually want to race Jinmo anytime soon. They could kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like I, I I knew I knew going in pretty much what I needed to do um, because uh, it was pretty clear that since we weren't given the binary at some stage, I was going to have to leak the binary. So I was mentally prepared to do that, and I, and so I was thinking in the back of my head, especially as the. Um, as I was sitting there basically waiting for the canary to get leaked, I was sort of thinking about how, what the next step would be uh, for leaking the whole binary, right? Because uh, that was clearly going to be the next step. So um, what I didn't expect was that the, the leak would always be exactly 45 bytes long. I thought, I could, I thought it was going to be string size, honestly. Um, so that was a bit of a shock, I guess. Yeah, well, it is controllable. So you can, you can put stuff on there to, like the, another argument to dump like a page at a time basically. Oh, can you? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much for, for sort of doing that intelligently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, no, you I, know, flag is a flag. So, you know. Yeah, I, I, I admit it was a very brute force because I, I clearly made probably about 16,000 connections to the server during that period. So I'm happy that it was stable, but it was very uh, aggressive. Um, <laughs> yeah. And the other guys, uh, like Zer, what would you rate it? I know you've done challenges exactly like that in the past. Yeah, um, I was thinking about 200 too. But to be fair, uh, I couldn't finish it yet, so I don't know how hard the second part would be. All right, fair enough. Honolulu? So I think, I think for me, um, since I missed the leak, it was, it was a little harder. If, given, so I'm assuming the way, the way it works is that when you get um, when you overwrite one of the addresses, then one of the pointers you control gets printed out, and then you just point it at what you want to leak. Right. Um, oh, almost. Okay. Um, well, that's the thing, Neo. I think so. Did did you maybe like do the leak like slightly differently than? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. So if I just you smashed RBX. Yeah, smashed exactly. So if you write a little bit more and overwrite the return address, uh you can just there is there are two calls to write just in the like vicinity so but uh we don't have any binary addresses though so no no we can, if you do a partial if you just do, do partial overwrite oh i see i see um i'm not that clever i think <laughs> I, I i i think it was more it was more oh hey look i leaked something let's just use that <laughs> like I, I i just kind of went with that right like yeah. okay like <laughs> I mean, and so, you know, you can see I actually have like folders full. I have a whole bunch of folders, leak 07 through leak 0F, which I just like dumped out 256 files in each, in each folder corresponding to one byte of the leak. It was pretty messy. It was pretty messy. Like I didn't really try to make this optimal in any sort of meaningful sense, but it, you know, it sort of works, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and then was definitely a very cool challenge. Yeah, now they are. Right. Uh, is this out of 500? Yeah. Yeah, probably 500 for me then. Oh, damn. <laughs> that was a little over the mark, I think, this week. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like... I appreciate it, though. It was a, it was a good experience. So, um, Honolulu and, and, and Xer, uh, I noticed that you guys obviously had played a blind rock challenge somewhere else online. So maybe you want to plug that for guys like Nandeo or people watching so they can practice. Yeah, so I I had solved the challenge called blind rock x64, I think, on RootMe before. Um, okay. But that one is, that one is um, the full blind rock. 
So you have to find the um, you have to find gadgets that um, either uh, cause a crash or cause a timeout or so. And then once you have those gadgets, you can find more more different gadgets. I'm sure you've read in the in the paper or in the slides. The slides are really useful. These ones here. Um, they have a really good description of all of the all of the how to find gadgets. Oh my um, God, that sounds really tough. <laughs> yeah, this, 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 the the problem is I, I tend to do this where I get stuck into one idea that I really want to do, um, and so in this case I I completely focused on blind drop without considering that that would have been probably way too much work for this challenge. Um, nice. I think, yeah, meta metagaming that very slightly. I mean, I, I didn't know about blind drop at all, so this is something I'm going to probably uh, go, go look at. But metagaming this slightly, uh, I'm not expecting to implement a research paper for, for pony racing. If you guys ever do do that, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, so the thing is, I, I, I figured the intended solution is the authors actually have, an ex have a thing that does it all in Ruby. And I was playing with the idea of actually implementing the logic of finding whether or not it crashed in Ruby. But that was, I ended up getting too annoyed at Ruby to do so. <laughs> yeah, speaking of programming language, we've got a question here. So, sir, you, uh, you're you using PHP to write your uh, exploits. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, do, is, so have you written kind of like your own uh, like pwn framework for this yeah thing? yeah but it, it's it's really basic actually um because uh it's only a wrapper so that i can use the same interface for uh, local programs and uh, remote sockets i've been using php for almost all my exploits and like every root me challenges and every pwnable.kr challenges i've done are done in php so yeah, i'm quite used to it wow. it's cool that's 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 yeah. really cool uh <laughs> That yeah. is really cool. Great. But those like what? socket and process uh, things that you were loading, are those like something you've written or is it part of like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's something I, I've written um, okay. here. I, I, I don't know if you can see my screen. I can. I switch to your screen right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, whoops. What did I do? Okay. I've written just three little files. Um, one that gives me a hex dump and two that um, process and socket that creates uh, the same interface so that I, I can just change uh, the, um, yeah. the class I call and I have uh, read write. Uh, let me check that for you. So mm. it's like the tubes module in yeah, Pro exactly. Tools, it's, but it's in PHP. From this. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Here, because uh, it's a little bit of uh, boilerplate to write and then uh, I, all I need to do is call the, the functions. Oh. Well, that's Wait, nice. Wait, so did did you solve tal root with PHP? Oh no, I, I can't. Uh, I solved okay. <laughs> every uh, except for the one that uh, like the kernel uh, kernel. Ones, uh, yeah, right. yeah I, I had to use assembly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so, impressive. Yeah, it's it's wow. really cool. So with that, I think we are wrapping up. So I just want to remind everyone that um, we do this uh, once per month. And we will announce the dates as soon as we have kind of like organized everything and, and, and set the date. But it will be about a month uh, from now. And uh, if you're interested in participating, you should play the community challenge, which will be released tomorrow. And so tomorrow at the same time as the episode started. So uh, 16 UTC or 4 p.m. UTC, uh, we will release the community challenge on our website. And the community challenge is a, it's a pwnable challenge and if you solve it you get a chance to participate in the next episode and for example that was how uh, nandayo uh, qualified into uh, this episode this time uh, and it might be you that does this uh, for the next episode uh, so the website pony.racing and uh, where you will also find uh, all the previous challenges we will uh, put this challenge up I guess some in, in some way we'll just have to figure out the packaging there um, yeah you can find all the previous episode the previous challenges community challenges see who has who solved the community challenges uh, and so on um, 
Yeah. So with that, I would just like to thank all of our participants for playing this episode together today. Thanks thank for you guys joining. so much for the challenge. Thank you. Yeah, this, is, yeah, this is fun. Yeah. yeah. And a big thanks to uh, Bob, my co-commentator and challenge author. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it was awesome. Always fun to, to make tough challenges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's what he does, Bob. Yep. Well, so with that, I uh, thanks everyone. And I hope you tune in for the next episode in about a month and have a nice, well, day, evening, morning, whatever time it is <laughs> in your place. Yeah. Thanks. Goodbye.